Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this absolute value inequality. And when graphing an absolute value inequality, we're basically going to be graphing an absolute value equation and then kind of determining if our lines are going to be part of the solution and determine if the points inside or outside the um, are the graph will be true or false as well. The first thing we like to do is always identify, well, what, what about our graph? Is that going to be a part of the solution or not? And to determine that, we can just look at our inequality symbol. Since that's less than or equal to, and not just less than, then we know it's going to be solid. That means any point that is on this equation is going to make this inequality true. The next thing we want to do is identify what are our transformations. How are we going to take, are we going from our parent graph, what is all that negative 1 half, minus 2, plus 1, what is that doing to our graph? So we have to go and look to our transformations equations, where we say that when we have an equation like this, you can see that the vertex is now hk. So we need to make sure we understand what the value of h is. Remember, it's x opposite of h. So this is x opposite of 2. So therefore, my vertex is now at 2, comma 1. Now notice the vertex is where the graph um, kind of changes the direction. So here, the vertex is at 0, 0. Now my vertex is at 2, 1. So that means basically I've taken my new graph and I've shifted over two units and up 1. So I'm going to do that kind of next here. So we can identify that my graph has been shifted two units to the right and one unit up. All right. Now, what we want to do is identify or notice what this negative 1 half is doing. Now, once I know it's a negative, that means my a is negative. That means my graph, instead of opening up, is now going to open down. All right. So it's very important to know that when you have a negative a, your graph is going to be opened down. But what is the 1 half going to do? Now, what the 1 half is going to do is that it's actually going to horizontally stretch my graph. But to really kind of understand that, what, we, what I think is best to do is create a table of values. And when creating a table of values, what's nice about the absolute value equation is it has a line of symmetry. Meaning, if I, pick, if I graph points to the left, I can just reflect them over my axis of symmetry, which goes to my vertex, and you have the exact same points on the right-hand side. So I want to choose points either to the left or to the right. And I would probably say for this case, it'd be easiest to choose points that are to the left. Next, I'm going to want to choose points that um, are not only um, just points to the left. Like you could easily pick uh, 1 and 0. Those would be very simple to use. However, I want to choose points that when I find out the absolute value and I multiply them by 1 half, I'm going to get an integer. Because if I choose 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And then I'm multiplying by 1 half, which is going to give me negative 1 half. Add to 1, it gives me 1 half. Actually, you know what? Let's just go and do that. Um, so let's do 1 and 0, because I think those, are the, those would be the obvious ones students would use. So let's plug in 1 in for this. And then I'll tell you which points I would have chosen instead of 1. So 1 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half plus 1 is equal to 1. I'm sorry, is equal to 1 half. Um, so therefore, at 1, I have 1 half. Now let's do 0. y equals negative 1 half times 0 minus 2 plus 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay, So over at 1, I'm at 1 half. At 0, I'm at 0. Now, what I, the other point I would have chosen would have, would have been 4. And the reason why is because 4 minus 2 is 2. And then 2, it would have been divisible when I multiplied it by that 2. So I would have chosen 2, or I'm sorry, a negative, negative 4. Um, or negative 2 would have worked as well. But again, we have our two points. These are fine. So I know I have two points going this way. I can easily just reflect them over. So when I went over to 1, I went up half. So I go over 1 here, up 1 half. And then this one will be at 0. And I can graph it just fine in that direction. Now remember, I graphed it solid because that's the way I determined. The next thing I want to do is identify um, if the inequality, where do I shade the rest of the points? What about the points that are in, uh, below or above my inequality graph? Now usually we always pick the test point 0, 0 because um, that's the easiest one to plug in. But in this case, you can see that my line goes through 0, 0. So since it goes through 0, 0 and I have a solid line, I know 0, 0 is a part of the solution. So I need to pick a point that is not going to be a part of the solution. So again, I want to be able to choose an x value that when I subtract it by 2 and take the absolute value of it, I am going to get something that I can easily multiply by negative 1 half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the point uh, negative 2 
0. So that means to test negative 2, 0, I'm going to put a 0 in for y and a negative 2 in for x. All right, so negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. So 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. Well, that is obviously false. So if it's false for this equation, that means all of the points inside are now true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your absolute value inequality. Thanks.